Hey, Chaco, uh, thank you for coming in. Uh, yeah. If thank I you, look Steve. at all thank the you, things you do, <laughs> it is outstanding. I mean, it's innovative, it's entrepreneurial. You're definitely uh, a tremendous leader. Um, you definitely have impact. I mean, what don't you do? I mean, just like you're, you're literally, I mean, you're in everything, right? So, um, it's it, just amazing, amazing history and, and one of just tremendous contribution and humbleness as well. I mean, you're, uh, I, I'm, you are, um, uh, just an amazing presence and anybody who has the good fortune to have you touch their lives. So thank you for coming in and doing this interview with me. Thanks for the kind words, uh, Stephen. You're too kind. So thank you. So, so Chaco, I'm, I'm always curious and my audience is always curious, uh, you know, what were those magic inflection points in your life? And it could have been something when you were three or five, or it could have been uh, a family member, or it could have been something happened in school, but what are those maybe three inflection points that really shape to who you are today as a person, as a professional, as a purposeful leader, and, and the amazing contributions you do. Yeah, thanks, uh, Stephen. So I think uh, uh, one one key thing would have been like, you know, I, I had a very in a good interest in engineering and hands-on engineering. So I would like to strip open stuff and put things together as a kid. And I think my father saw that and uh, uh, we cut a deal. So we used to love going and spending time with my grandparents. So, which was in Salem, where our university is. So he said that you can go spend as much time as you want, as long as you spend half a day in, in college. And so I, I, I spent a year studying electrical engineering, a year, uh, I spent each year studying electrical, textiles, mechanical, civil. Uh, so all the facets of engineering I was exposed to at a very young age in high school. And uh, kind of built the foundation so that I can go into any conversation today and then kind of have that that foundation level uh, which was imbibed in me as as I grew up. Uh, so I think that was a great foundation that I had. And then uh, I became a textile entrepreneur in the family textile business uh, uh, in the late 90s, uh, in the 90s. And then uh, we had a crisis in the textile industry and uh, uh, it was a, kind of a mess with uh, labor uh, labor union issues and stuff like that. And that was an inflection point for me. I had to get out and then try try to f uh, figure myself out. And that's how I stumbled upon V Technologies. And uh, so so those would be the two two points that uh, 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 that shaped me. And then then uh, later, uh, about five years ago, I, st I took over hands-on placements uh, of st young students in colleges. Uh, in our in our university, and then that's where I realized the plight of the students and what are what I mean the ramifications of the placement system uh, uh, has its own uh, pluses and minuses. And the huge point is that they keep projecting students. So I was exposed to that, and and then helped me build hire me. So so those would be the two or three. So it's interesting, you know, for you know your father to put you into this situation where you have to do some college at the same time you're you're tinkering and putting things together and taking them apart and so on. And the fact that you spent time in all the sort of different disciplines of engineering, which is very um, interdisciplinary, but it's also very translational because engineering is very practical, right? So, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, in the, um, the interactions I've had with you, I can see that. I can see this sort of dendritic thinking, this sort of network mycelium kind of thinking that goes in branches in all these different directions and how you are very inclusive and you can appreciate uh, these areas, these stars that are occurring everywhere. So now, now I can see uh, where that comes from. And then, and then you get into, as you mentioned, textile, but the market changes. So you have to get into uh, technology in a big way, and, and you have the technologies, a top healthcare uh, practice company in the world today, uh, but you do so much more. So that's really, really fascinating. <laughs> and and yeah. um, I could see why you're so curious across so many different dimensions, because when you were very young, you were exposed to all these different areas of application of interdisciplinary combined with translation, translation to the audience, meaning 
converting theory into some practical solution, right? Uh, and then um, you indicated that you saw this sort of uh, problem where maybe the top uh, colleges, uh, students in the top colleges maybe would get hired, but what about the rural areas? What about uh, people who come from any part of your country? How do they get embraced and, and recognized? And so you created okay. uh, so, so actually uh, emphasizing that point, Stephen. So if, if 100 students go in, every college would say that they recruit 5% of the class or like 3% or whatever. That means how much do they reject? They reject 95%. So we, we are creating an ecosystem of failures. And, and these are youngsters, they don't like to fail. And then, but we're creating that, uh, that ethos in them, like, you know, failure, failure psychosis. So, and that's when I said that we need to have one exam and that exam should be shared with everybody else. So that that becomes the gateway to 200 companies or 300 companies, that's what Hire Me does. So we have a million students right now on our platform. And then we invite uh, companies, uh, uh, 200 plus companies to come in and then recruit from that right now so yeah i mean that's fascinating and so um you're embracing the entire 100 not just the five at the top right because yeah, everybody has some particular skill that's going to be of use that's, and that's true so and then uh, each company has its own window of the world and then they they want to recruit only from that window but that means like you know, somebody else will be somewhere else but that as good, but just not selected for that company. So. And then part of that hire me platform is you also have reskilling, right? Yes. So we we, we tend to so there's a, a report that now we started working with a lot of governments around the world, uh, and uh, so we do an assessment for the students a year before they graduate, and then we give them a report called the jobability report, job ability jobability report, and uh, based on which they. Uh, we figure out what are the areas they need to uh, they, they need to embrace, and then we have something called a high MA gold, uh, where we customize that curriculum and then give it to them. So, so and that uh, thereby they're able to bridge that gap. So, yeah. So you're, do, you're doing a gap analysis, and then you're bridging that gap through the uh, the assessment, and then the uh, providing the opportunity. We've actually, to... we've actually built a content uh, something called a LCMS, a learning content management system. So basically, uh, like, you know, a lot of people will know different things. So just the things that you don't know are given to you, and then uh, you're able to do that. And that's something we tried it out in the X Prize uh, for rapid reskilling. Uh, it was a $5 million X Prize for rapid reskilling. And we just put our hat in. Uh, we were the only company outside the U.S. to enter that U.S. race. And uh, we actually did very well. So we won the semifinal round, and we were leading in the final round, too. So... Yeah. Yeah. And because this is sort of translational um, based, meaning you're leading, you're the most effective solution. That's basically yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, and, and that's because of all of this novel thinking, right? You're probably having a novel way of looking at the problem and then addressing it in a practical way. And you've built the tools to address it in a, a practical way to identify yeah, so the gaps. And, yeah, we, we embrace two of my facets where I really love, like one is psychometric thinking because everyone uh, everyone has a different mindset. So who's the right mindset for the right job? Like, you know, because one of the things we were doing at the High Me X Prize was uh, to, to train healthcare workers. And to, you, I mean, you can train many healthcare workers, but in order to have effective healthcare workers, you need to have high empathy. So you might have the best student ever, like, you know, to clear everything, but they don't have empathy. They're going to be bad at the job. So we we screen them through psychometric. Uh, and then something that we were developing then, but now we've developed is, is a true facet of learning. And in, in, uh, in, in, there are different styles of learning, right? So uh, there could be some somebody who has a kinesthetic learning ability or a pictorial learning ability. So how do you customize the same curriculum in these, in these three uh, facets so that, like, you know, we, we can give the right uh, kind of thinking and the right kind of training for the people with their mindset. So, Right. So some are auditory, some are kinesthetic, uh, some are very visually oriented. Some people actually have to do in, in mm -hmm. some way to absorb. And, and what you've done is you've been able to assess what the orientation is and then to tailor the training, but also on the psychometric side so that there's a behavioral match to the to the job. And then you have the highest uh, performance uh, metrics for this $5 million 
X Prize, and you're the only non-American group, and you're all performing the Americans. That is must be fascinating for the Americans, right? Yeah, it, it's it's good to get different perspectives, and uh, you never know what works, so, right? So yeah. Well, hopefully they would study what you've done, right? because yeah. because you took a uh, an interesting novel, very thoughtful approach, right? Because you're not familiar with the American system, so you have to look at it, analyze it, right? Yeah. And I guess that speaks again to you, Chaco. <laughs> These sort of are the very diverse dendritic. I call it dendritic because you're sort of go, going across in so many different dimensions, and you do it all concurrently, like a quantum computer. You know, <laughs> massively parallel, uh, applying that kind of capability to this uh, situation. Okay, so. You know, we we went back into your early life, and and you know, the, and then we sort of jumped to uh, to some of the things you're doing uh, now. But well, let's continue that early life. Uh, uh, you know, you you uh, are you have this business. You then move into V, um, but you but you do so many things. So first of all, let's let's talk about V Technologies and, and what do you do. So in B Technologies, we uh, uh, focused about 23 years ago in the healthcare segment. Uh, uh, in uh, and in the healthcare, so we service about close to 400 different hospitals uh, and providing them clinical documentation, providing them patient access, uh, uh, revenue cycle management, uh, and a bit of automation uh, in in through that process. So uh, I mean, if you've heard the hospital name. Uh, uh, outside, like a, a, a good hospital, it's it's probably our clients because we have a close to seventy percent market share on the top hospitals in the U.S. Uh, and because the hospitals are going through a lot of strain, as you know, so like you know, especially coming out of COVID and and all of that, so uh, and uh, the reimbursements going down with the insurance companies and and things like that. So uh, that's where uh, we we focus on. So try to keep the hospitals healthy and keep them honest in the sense that. Like, you know, because uh, medical coding, for example, is a very complex thing. You need to go through all the ICD-10 codes. And uh, uh, and uh, so what happened in the U.S. about uh, uh, seven, eight years ago, uh, in the uh, U.S. moved from ICD-9 to ICD-10. And uh, so the number of codes actually uh, multiplied by a factor of five. So uh, and uh, so we, we were early in that, like, you know, training the coders. And we actually have a training school. Uh, and another interesting thing that we do is we actually take orphans and underprivileged students and we work with other companies who have a CSR budget. And uh, so we set up the training school. Uh, and uh, so that's where we recruit a lot of our students. They come in from very, like, you know, kind of uh, uh, like, you know, uh, difficult backgrounds. And then we we give them a better life. Uh, and And then the revenue cycle management is where we help them train uh, like, you know, for accounting and finances and stuff like that. And the other segment of the same healthcare pool is we work with insurance companies and uh, there we do claims processing and uh, like, you know, claims payment, those kind of stuff. But the more interesting thing is we started working about uh, 12 years ago in the U.S. population health, uh, which is Medicare Advantage Plan. So we do risk stratification. And uh, it's interesting to see the evolution of uh, what we started doing in healthcare. When we first started, it was retrospective risk analytics. So uh, uh, like, you know, after the fact, like every year we would get the work and then we would uh, find out what the risk of that portfolio and then give it back. And then it started about five years ago to come to concurrent coding. So as the patient is coming in 24 hours, like, you know, at the point of care. So, and now we started doing predictive uh, risk analytics. So finding out what are the risks that the per person may have and, you know, those kind of things. And towards that, now we are actually building an uh, uh, NLP, uh, AI, machine learning based uh, algorithm uh, to go through the records and then actually pull out these uh, these uh, uh, p potential uh, issues that the patients may have. And then the whole idea is to uh, reduce the cost of care and, and the quality of care. That's one side of V technologies, and the other side of V technologies, we do more of engineering. Uh, so, engineering, we have a, a, a MEP, mechanical, electrical, and plumbing, uh, which comes out of our architectural, engineering, and construction services. Uh, so, we we service a lot of hotels, uh, like one of the Super Bowl stadiums that the last Super Bowl was played was actually engineered by us. 
uh, and uh, 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 similarly, so we work with, uh, uh, and then now we see the evolution of going into the building information management, uh, uh, building intelligence in buildings actually. So uh, uh, putting in like you know, a lot of ESG type uh, work coming into the buildings, uh, especially like in New York, if you see there's something called local law 97, uh, which is basically telling uh, buildings, large buildings, that if you don't reduce your power by 20%, your taxes will go up 20%. And so we, we're we creating digital twins uh, of the buildings with us to find out like, you know, what, what uh, at the minute level, how do we make the buildings more efficient? You know, those kind of stuff. And then, of course, we have IT where we build products like Hire Me and, and, uh, and uh, many other uh, uh, products and platforms that we built. So, I mean, that's quite diversified. <laughs> right? So, I mean, uh, your product license, um, cycle management, design and architecture, engineering, construction assignments. I mean, uh, yeah. uh, and there are a me, couple of others management. too, like we keep, like we keep uh, uh, it's a society safe. So we des design a significant percentage of American fire trucks. So it's almost 20%, one in five fire trucks or something like that is designed by us. So. Yeah, that's kind of fascinating. And you're all with fire engines, <laughs> and, and and you you do six uh, six uh, sigma accuracy, right? <laughs> you're doing some yeah. kind of basic work. So, and and you have you know all of these major hospitals. So, you know, and, wow, I mean it's it's incredible. And th and this was a pivot from textiles. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's a good pivot. <laughs> Yeah, I stumbled upon it, like, you know, so uh, I I, uh, I was uh, working with the Indian embassy and I uh, uh, was working with a couple of uh, uh, embassies and then uh, I got this requirement from Cigna Healthcare. It came out at five o'clock uh, in the evening. Uh, I was in Philadelphia, incidentally, uh, that day. And uh, the entire RFP, uh, a normal RFP today takes my team about uh, three to four weeks with about 30, 40 people working together. And it, it was actually a dream come true. So I, I filled in the entire RFP overnight, complete RFP overnight, and just put in, and that became the vision document for V-Technology. So how do you recruit? How do you train? How do you, what's your quality? Uh, what's of systems and processes? So I finished all of that and I, and I sent, because there was no deadline put there. So, uh, so I sent it overnight and uh, literally at like, you know, five o'clock in the morning or something like that, 12 hours. and put it in. And then they realized that they hadn't put the timeline. So they said it's due in eight weeks. So. <laughs> hey, I, I, again, I can see all of this uh, interdisciplinary college, you know, uh, all these different engineering disciplines coming together. Um, you also co-founded this uh, software technology park, uh, the VSTP at Sona Towers. Can you talk about that? I guess that, that's pretty amazing, really, right? So uh, my uh, uh, my father was the one who brought IT to India. So when he brought a company called Texas Instruments over, so that was in 1982, uh, and uh, that building was the first building to actually have a satellite Earth uh, station in India, uh, a private uh, building to have a satellite Earth station where TI was uploading it. And then uh, Indian government said that it's far ahead of its time, and uh, then they actually bought over the satellite and then called it uh, VSNL, which is became the gateway of uh, India uh, till till recently, the only gateway. And uh, so when TI was looking at moving out, and I was looking at moving out of textiles, uh, so I went to them and I said, "Let's, I'll create a win-win situation for you." So, I mean, if you knock this roof off or like this light off from here, uh, it's going to give you ten cents on the dollar. I'll give you your dollar, but the payment terms are mine. Like you know, so. Uh, uh, trust me, we'll, we'll arrive at a price and then uh, give me 18 months and I'll pay you. So you don't need to get like, you know, one fifth of what you or what you spent or whatever, you know. And they trusted me and uh, they left it to us. And then uh, so I went into uh, 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 California, for example, and then there were companies like Cisco, Verifone and Oracle. So between 96 and 99. So uh, and that was my a step into the technology world. So I actually incubated all of them in India. Uh, so we had TI's facility ready to go. So we brought them in, we we did the networking and stuff like that, and then uh, uh, gave them the, uh, the first foray into India. So 
I mean, that's pretty amazing. I mean, because India now, I mean, that's pivotal and pioneering in the Indian economy. And India now is a force to be reckoned with, right? I mean, uh, um, yeah. And, I know, uh, you know one of the founders of Infosys, uh, like he looks at me and uh, he has this, uh, every time he looks at me, your father is the father of IT in India. So, so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, literally, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it, and if you go back even further earlier in your family, you were, you, you financed uh, what happened in India too, right? Yeah, so yeah, we come in from a merchant banking family the, called the Nagratar Chetiars, and uh, uh, so we uh, were the last mile bankers for the British uh, because uh, in our ecosystem, so the word is more than a contract. So if you give somebody a word, that's supposed to be more than a contract. So that's how we brought up in, like you know, with high ethics and in, in terms of trying to uh, honor our commitments and those kind of stuff. So. Uh, and that's the same uh, ethos that uh, the British saw in us that uh, uh, they took it forward. And then we were last mile bankers wherever the British went uh, in Asia. So they kind of took us. So, And uh, so that's uh, if you see C Street in Sri Lanka, uh, uh, people will tell you it's commercial street, but it's actually called uh, Chityar Street. And we had 1,500 banks on that one road. So, Or, or if you go to Serangoon Road in, uh, uh, or Market Street in Singapore. So that's where we had our offices. So. Yeah, I mean, it's just a, a really a pioneering family from 100 years ago. And then pioneering and bringing um, all of these multinationals to India and then pioneering and so many, pioneering in textiles uh, early on as well. I mean, just so many different areas that you're pioneering, but you also are in education. Can you talk about that aspect of what you do? Yeah, so... Uh, one of the things that, uh, like you said, like, you know, a hundred years ago when my great grandfather started on uh, his textile operation, uh, he found that like, you know, uh, Indians were not being trained. Actually, the British had originated the educational system, architecture in a great way, uh, where you had great high schools. So like, you know, so uh, like, you know, a, a guy like me going up in India could speak in English, you know, those kind of stuff. Uh, and but the higher education, they kind of kept it kind of uh, in, inside the UK, if you will. And then, so you had to go across to the UK, learn the British way and then come back or whatever, or, or they wanted more Britishers to come in. Uh, and uh, so that's how, when he, want, when he started in the 1920s and wanted to recruit textile engineers, and he was told that like, you know, uh, you need to inc uh, recruit a Britisher. So he said that, I believe an Indian is as equally talented, but he couldn't find it. So. He, he first sent a team to come back and run it. And then halfway through uh, in the 50s, he got, kind of got a epiphany to say that I could actually train my, my teachers and then they could come in and start my, uh, I could start my own college and then train students. So that's how uh, he built uh, Tyagaraja Engineering College, uh, which we incidentally celebrated 75 years. And, and then an institution that we run, Tyagaraja Polytechnic, uh, and uh, then Sona, and then during the 1990s, uh, the, the world was going through Y2K and, and India was getting more into the limelight of IT. Uh, but, uh, the India's IT prowess was getting known to the world. So uh, that's when we said that we need to uh, up our game and then get engineering college. So that's how Sona College of Technology came out in 1997. And more recently, uh, uh, just five, six years ago, uh, so we realized that a lot of uh, the, the newer students are tending to go into arts and science and those kind of stuff. So that's where we started Sona College of, uh, of uh, Arts and Science. And the whole, uh, the, the, the objective of us is that we, we try to focus on research. So, and uh, which is different from other private institutions in India, uh, because uh, most of the uh, engineering happens, uh, uh, research happens in IITs in India or government owned in institutions, because Frankly, the government actually spends uh, more uh, on their own colleges than, than the private institutions. So uh, the private institutions have found it difficult to uh, to manage that. So that's how, like, you know, we said that let's embrace research and let's go. Uh, since the fact that we come in from an industrial background, so uh, we tend to merge and bridge uh, industry academia together. And that's how we've been able to successfully do a lot of research, research work today 
Uh, and uh, some of our research, which has been path breaking, has been uh, the sonar speed research. So, uh, sonar speed is a, a special electrical and electronic drives uh, sonar special uh, SPED. Uh, and uh, uh, so, in power electricals and electronics, so we develop rocket motors. So, the last eight years, we designed, developed, manufactured uh, satellite motors, rocket motors, gyroscope, reaction wheels, uh, and all, uh, and uh, uh, the kind of the icing on the uh, or the moonshot or whatever it was was landing on the moon. So, uh, and uh, so we did the cryogenic uh, um, uh, the the cryogenic activator, uh, which basically was mixing the oxygen and the hydrogen uh, for the uh, uh, for the rocket was built by us. So, and... I, I mean, it's uh, it's just um, uh, really quite amazing and. Um... I mean, you you got uh, all of these patent filings. You have patents. Uh, you've done advancements, and you know, also in the fabrics as well, right? And we'll talk a little bit later about uh, you know the fiber network and the investments you're doing there. But you got something like what uh, 40, 50 uh, research laboratories now, something like that. Yeah, close to uh, uh, almost yeah, uh, uh, close to 40, 40 of them. So in different areas. So. Uh, because it's academic research, so we have academicians in different areas. So, right from nanophotonics. So, so nanophotonics. We, again, we've been able to work with the Indian Space Research Organization. ISRO is a great organization to build a whole ecosystem of companies. So they embrace uh, people like us. So uh, th we were doing radiation patches uh, on the satellite. So, uh, and they were importing it from Taiwan. And then they said that, listen, we want a local manufacturer. So that's how we 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 do the, the nano epitaxial layer. And then uh, we've also, our electrical department, for example, has come out with, uh, they come with regular patents and a lot of innovation in nano quantum dot oil. So, it's basically taking uh, synthetic oil and then trying to find a replacement for transformer oil using nano quantum dots, and then uh, uh, by by which uh, we uh, the oil is uh, re uh, I mean it's biodegradable from that uh, from that angle. Otherwise, you know, uh, it gets redundant. And then uh, so again, uh, a great uh, thing. The thinnest watch in the world uh, is a watch called Titan watches, Titan Edge. Uh, and they were doing electroplating at the back. Uh, they were doing plating at the back, uh, stamping. Uh, and uh, so we did a nano plating on, on the top of that uh, watch and uh, uh, on the stamp. And that increased the shelf life of the stamp uh, by two, two and a half times, for example. So uh, so we have different stuff. And then we have uh, sonar coin, for example, uh, which is concrete in, uh, concrete innovation. So we developed a lot of waste to wealth projects. So uh, on taking like you know slurry waste of, uh, because Salem, being a steel city, has a lot of slurry waste. How do we take that waste and then uh, convert them into uh, bricks and like you know those kind of stuff? So and then we actually took that uh, and took that research to the to the last mile and then took it to the society and then trained women. Uh, and we created a women demonstrating uh, demonstrating park uh, for women technology. Uh, and trying to get women entrepreneurs to come in and then embrace this technology and then start making blocks. So that way they can do waste to wealth projects. And then also similarly on uh, urban, a lot of 40% of urban waste is paper. And then we've trained them how to do art paper, for example, and then so creating the satellite centers. So, I mean, the, the sort of social contribution and empowerment, I mean, it's uh, quite remarkable. You've also embraced uh, things like artificial intelligence and machine learning. Can you talk about that? Yeah, so we, we're doing a bunch of stuff. So uh, uh, right from training students in AI and and those kind of uh, 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 those kind of things, and then uh, AI. Uh, right now, we are embedding in healthcare in a big way in terms of developing this NLP engine. So we're collaborating with people. We're building certain stuff on our on our own. Uh, and uh, so for hire me, we use AI in order to take the assessment uh, on a mobile phone. So uh, like, you know, anyone can take the assessment. So if I get a tough question, I can give it to Steven. So, uh, uh, and then Steven can answer that. So then there's no authenticity. So, so then we do visual recognition uh, using AI and making sure it's, it's me who's taking the test, you know, those kind of stuff. Uh, and, and then uh, there's also, uh, we're starting a, a chain of, uh, of clinics in India, uh, uh, in, in the front end, uh, so where we are trying to embrace a lot of this uh, AI technology in the back end 
uh, and at the point of care and then taking it in the back and then uh, moving that across. So uh, those are some of the stuff. And then uh, again, in building, uh, so we're using AI in terms of, uh, there's a huge difference between the plan of a building and the as built of a building. And then, uh, 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 so it was interesting. So uh, like, you know, uh, I've actually got, uh, uh, I filed ten patents, and uh, uh, and this this idea that I just told you actually came from my father, who's eighty years old, and uh, so he he said like you know you guys are filing patents, so I need to come up with an idea, and he actually came <laughs> up with this idea. So. Oh, that's that is just so uh, remarkable and, and interesting, and uh, and kind of heartwarming as well. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's just. Uh, you know, just so, so fascinating. And then you got into this uh, fiber project. Can you talk about that? I, I think it's so interesting. You know, so textiles has always been in our, as you, as people say, it's in our blood. So four generations and uh, uh, being the largest textile family in the world in the 1970s, you know, so we've, we've kind of got that uh, uh, in our, uh, in our minds in a way. So uh, the whole idea was to try to see how do we get, textiles to what we know to what it's going to be. Uh, and we call it textile computing. Uh, and uh, so how do you embed, uh, like, you know, uh, a lot of uh, textiles today in the world uh, are, are just wearables. I mean, we, we wear clothing, but uh, can we embed technology into wearables? So that's where Fiber Project goes. And then it's basically to engineer uh, to treat different alignments. So like, you know, you have a urinary bladder issue, a person uh, uh, has a urinary bladder. So we're uh, looking at developing socks, which can uh, cure urinary bladder. So, and uh, somebody has uh, uh, motion sickness and they, whenever they go up the mountains or skiing or whatever. So can we put them a ear implant? And then, uh, because the ear stones determine a lot of that, right? So, uh, and uh, like uh, the whole thing is embedding sensors, embedding uh, different electrical stimulations to stimulate different parts of the body and, and those kind of stuff. So how can you pass low electricity to clothing in, in areas where you want it to be? So, you know, so those kind of uh, things is how, what we've uh, looked at in fiber. So, and we're combining the best of uh, Canada, which is near your home, right? So uh, uh, best, best of Ontario. So, uh, all the 13 universities around Ontario, except Waterloo, every other university around there. So, and then uh, 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 in, in India, so we have these three institutions of ours, Sona College, Tehraja Polytechnic, and Sona College of Art and Science. Uh, and uh, so we have in India about 300 PhDs who work with us. So uh, all of them interdisciplinary. So, uh, and biomedical, mechatronics, uh, electrical, electronics, uh, uh, IT, all of them come together in certain projects and work with the Canadian uh, ecosystem. So I, I see this going forward more and more. So uh, India is probably like, you know, India, IT companies have seen India as a great destination for talent. But for research, uh, I, I think uh, uh, Jack Welch has uh, developed uh, the, the Jack Welch Center in Bangalore, which has the highest concentration of PhDs anywhere in the world in one, one building. And that's because they knew that. So I think a lot of more companies need to start coming and embracing uh, uh, institutions like us, like, you know, uh, wherever there's knowledge and uh, uh, and then start collaborating on research because uh, like, you know, I had the opportunity through YPO to actually go across to uh, uh, Orange and visit the Edison labs. And then we all often hear that Edison didn't fail 99 times, uh, but he succeeded once, but he actually failed 13,000 times. I was amazed, like, you know, to get that bulb. So convert that as millions. So if you had like, you know, 13, thir uh, 13,000 millions or whatever, it was like, you know, 1.3 billion or whatever, uh, you might succeed. But what we, uh, what we are able to do through this ecosystem of research and stuff like that, working with uh, different, so you can spend 10% uh, of your budget with us and you have uh, maybe 20, 30% more uptake. So it increases the propensity to succeed in many ways. So. Yeah, I mean, um, the scaling capability that you can do in India and the natural uh, talent that's there, and you're enabling all of that talent as well, you're empowering it. And uh, uh, definitely a driver uh, today and into the future. And you're one of the pioneers in doing that in your family. 
as you indicated, your 80 plus dad is still coming up with patent ideas. So, <laughs> um, and, and you're embracing all of it. I mean, like you're using AI and creating health profiles for large population sets, uh, critical health issues as diabetes, blood pressure, cardiovascular disease, stroke. I mean, you're you're using AI in your Hire Me platform. I mean. It, it, you're a novel nanotech with your with your fiber and your you know it's Canadian healthcare uh, health uh, university network. I mean, um, you were um, on the leadership board of the Terasaki Institute, which is a biomedical institute. In fact, their CEO uh, just recently was um, nominated by Stanford as one of the top ten in the world. Right? So, cool. okay, nice. Yeah, I mean, it's, and and you know, he's got like one hundred twenty thousand plus citations, which is pretty good for a researcher. And he's still very young, Absolutely. so yeah. Um, I think it's just uh, 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 really quite amazing. And you're in coffee too, right? Yeah, uh, I mean, my grandfather. So, like you know, every generation we pick a trait, and then my grandfather liked coffee. So, uh, I mean, he wanted to he wanted a profession where he will work till he dies. So he said. You should never retire. So, and coffee plantation was a great one to actually go in just to the field when when he was uh, uh, at the sunset of his life, uh, uh, like you know, so that walking around and and stuff like that and breathing fresh air. So, and then he trained me on coffee. So, in terms of uh, especially the post farm, uh, and uh, if you've had Illy Cafe, uh, uh, like you know, it's probably one of my toughest customers ever that I've ever faced across. Uh, and so like, you know, de developing specialty coffee for them. And so we, we continue that, like, uh, uh, just look at coffee. Uh, it gives us a good, good break. And we're trying to do a lot of uh, thing in agriculture today. So a lot of chemicals are being used in the world. And, uh, and everyone talks of like, you know, ESG and stuff like that, but then uh, not in what, uh, not as much in agriculture. So we're actually working with, uh, uh, we have a lab, we've created a lab in our coffee uh, thing to actually grow different types of uh, uh, mycelium and different types of shrooms and stuff like that to trying to battle uh, uh, like, you know, uh, pest, uh, instead of pesticides to actually replace them. Uh, and you never know where the new material comes from, you know, so we are trying to synthesize, uh, uh, trying to develop uh, uh, mushrooms from, say, uh, elephant poop. Uh, because a lot of elephants around the, around our plantation, so and then the whole idea is to try to develop uh, a thing which eats pepper plants, which grows along with coffee, right? So uh, and so those kind of uh, practices, so merging what we're doing with mycelium, Sona Biotech, for example, so uh, where we do high end nutraceuticals in in mushrooms uh, from that angle, so. Yeah, I mean, let's mine. There's so much to mine uh, or <laughs> uh, layers to unpack. Um, you talk about my mycelium and, and this company where you're using uh, mushroom extracts to help with, uh, uh, you know, biomedical areas and things like that. And and um, you can even you even have uh, you're, you're doing research to see maybe you can get better sleep or um, yeah. I mean, it's right. it's just really interesting. What, what what are some of the applications you're looking at and researching on the mycelium side? So see, see, what's happened is that, like, you know, if you look at shrooms and uh, mushrooms and uh, bush medicine, so like, you know, has embraced uh, these mushrooms in a big way traditionally, right? So uh, so they have a huge head start in Australia. So there was an Australian uh, company called Mycelium um, uh, called Lifecycle uh, 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 from a brand perspective. And then so they, they would develop that. And then uh, we in India have a lot of experience and expertise in Ayurveda and in growing herbs and, and things like that. So what we're trying to do is to try to, we said that let's invest in, in this company in Australia and then bring them to India and try to like, you know, co-create uh, the best of Ayurveda and the best of uh, bush medicine, put them together and, and then uh, give it to the society. Uh, it's actually taken off very well. So, so we, we have uh, the best, like, you know, if you want to sleep, uh, there's, there's a type of mushrooms that you take and you uh, increases your sleep. You want to dream better, there's lion's made. You want to rest, a restful sleep, there's rishi. You want quadriceps to kind of wake you up and give you that coffee kind of feeling. Uh, you, you you want longer hair and better nails and stuff like that. Then you take shiitake. So uh, each of these mushrooms have these certain secret sauces. And we're trying to 
uh, uh, serve it across to to bottles and like you know stuff like that. So yeah, and and then you're doing a lot of community development as well. I mean, you you mentioned the uh, skilling program with for women, like the technology park in Salem. Um, you have a community uh, radio uh, FM radio. Maybe you can talk a little bit about that. You got uh, Sona Yukti, which I think is yeah. really interesting as well. Uh, can you uh, get into more details about some of these uh, community activities? Yeah, so a lot of research, like, you know, so uh, we, we we need to serve, uh, like, you know, a lot of researchers do research, but the uh, area where we excel in is to try to solve local problems. So, uh, so some of the problems, one of the patents that I have uh, is on taking waste and segregating waste. Because today, if you look at urban waste, nobody wants to touch it. But the moment you remove plastic, and, and you remove uh, uh, like, you know, uh, wet waste. A lot of people like wet waste to make manure and like, you know, composites and stuff like that. Agriculturists will love it. They would take it, embrace it, and then uh, thrive on it. And the similar stuff with plastic. So people don't want to touch if it's mixed, but if it's individual plastic, then they would go out and take it. So so we've, we've actually, uh, like, you know, one of my ideas is to isolate some of this stuff and then separate them at the point of uh, when you when you when you aggregate it itself, so that when it goes in, it goes to two separate landfills or whatever you know, you know that that kind. Uh, and uh, the other uh, research that we're now recently doing is in India, uh, we've had the class system for whatever five six hundred years, uh, and uh, a lot of people underprivileged uh, who don't have the same. Uh, like you know, upbringing and knowledge and like you know those kind of stuff. So we had we've developed a a, a village uh, ecosystem uh, to train uh, the the scheduled castes and the scheduled tribes uh, uh, on different training programs and and finding out what is needed from them. So you know uh, from that aspect, and then uh, the whole uh, Sona Yukti program came out uh, uh, saying that like you know there are a lot of like you know the number of People in India are mind blow blowing, right? So we're the largest country in the world today. So uh, as a country, we are like, you know, 20, our average age is about 26 or something like that. 52% of India is less than the age of 25. And and uh, if you, you take Canada and America put together, North America put together, uh, the North American subcontinent, uh, and that's the size of our population, 17 and under. So, uh, so all of them need to go out and get jobs, but we're not creating enough jobs to train people and stuff like that. So we said that, what is it that we can do is we can scale it up in a mass scale. So that's how the Sona Yukti program came out. Uh, and where we started working, uh, training students on three months, six months jobs, and then uh, go out and uh, and they can actually earn a living. So that's one one thing that we're living through in our Sona Yukti centers uh, uh, through our Valepa Foundation. Uh, where we uh, do the skilling programs for uh, healthcare, healthcare training, for example, and then there are different schemes of the government of India that uh, we are we are working with. Uh, so some some are called uh, uh, PMKVY, uh, which is three to six months programs. There is another program which is eighteen months. Uh, so we train them for longer skills, uh, and because uh, we need to generate a million jobs a month, Stephen. So. Uh, yes, for the next 15 sure. years. And then when you break that down, it's between now and now, 1.28 seconds. Yeah. That is when a job needs to get created. And that's why, uh, like, you know, uh, a program like Hire Me, where we discover talent and then feed them. So these are stuff that we said that we should, uh, uh, as, uh, as an Indian living in India, so, like, you know, we need to uh, see what we can do for the society. So, uh, and the Sona FM community radio? Uh, yeah, so that's, uh, you know, sometimes it's it's a dream which uh, uh, comes a reality. So it's like a, a kind of an epiphany in a way. So uh, like, you know, 40 years ago, uh, 30, uh, 35 years ago, whatever it was, uh, I uh, my first task was to sit in a, a, a small coffee plantation up in the mountains. And I actually wrote a story that there was a very powerful radio station and which uh, was a second world war setting and then uh, a, a, and that became the the focal point for controlling the asia uh, like you know because china uh, japan was advancing into india uh, and uh, like you know so how do you counter that like you know so you had this powerful radio station and there was a spy whatever you know uh, that's for another day but 
Uh, and uh, so when the idea of the radio station came out, like, you know, my team wanted to come and put the radio station in Salem. I said, no, no, no. Uh, it has to be up in that hill in that area. So then they went on a survey. And I mean, truth be told that they, they, this, uh, I gave them three other places which are equally good. They said, no, 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 this is the best and where the radio station should be. And then we put that there. And so we're covering a, a large platform of 400 villages. Uh, and uh, uh, so we, uh, a lot of community radios in India tend to be academic centric. So the students run it and stuff like that. So we said, no, it has to be for the society, by the society. So uh, we bring in a lot of people and uh, uh, we bring in like, you know, something that they should know about the rule of the land of police or lawyers and, and stuff like that. And we bring in activists to come in and talk about their passion and why they're doing those kind of stuff. And 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 in those kind and then some of it is discovering young talent so like you know it's amazing that you put in a talent and the and the moment they see it they jump on a very large radio station and then they go out and then we discover talent so so well i, I mean it's a, a just an amazing sort of uh empowerment tool um you're also active in in these industry um, um associations like nascom and so on uh, but also in entrepreneurial uh, organizations. You're in the Entrepreneurs Organization and the Young Presidents Organization, and you earned the Whitefield Global Social Impact Board uh, in 2018. So can you talk about those two organizations and some of the industry organizations and uh, you know the value you see in and people embracing those organizations and so on? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, like, you know, but as entrepreneurs, when we, uh, like, you know, uh, 23 years ago, we were like, and I was trying to figure out my new life from textiles to technology. And, and at that time is when uh, I founded, uh, I was uh, one of the five fo uh, founding members of the Bangalore uh, Entrepreneurs Organization. So it kind of gave us a huge platform of trying to see how other entrepreneurs uh, go about establishing businesses and running businesses and those kind of stuff. And then I uh, got involved in a forum, uh, which is basically uh, like a, a personal board of advisors. Uh, and so we, over the last 23 years, we met year after month after month and uh, like, you know, and, and we support each other. So on different, uh, different uh, issues that they may have, uh, personal business, you know, those kind of stuff. Uh, so that's what it helps you uh, get. Uh, you get great learning content too. So having these learning events, so, so about 15 learning events. Uh, and then uh, as my uh, business grew bigger, so then I joined YPO uh, about 13 years ago. And then uh, the YPO journey also has been very good. So it actually gives you this huge industry networks, which YPO is very good at, like, you know, so as like, you know, it's a construction network or you have family business network. And each, each of these have their own, unique uh, things are like, you know, healthcare business. And uh, so I got involved in the healthcare business network and was in, uh, been in the board for many years and uh, uh, as their uh, impact officer too. So trying to see how can we take healthcare companies and creating impact uh, and then actually communicating to the world uh, 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 like that. And um, right now at the family business network, uh, uh, I'm the champion for Asia, for example, mm -hmm. and uh, they're uh, trying to develop uh, uh, like, you know, issues around family business, uh, uh, looking at generational transition and how do you how do you imbibe that and how do you find different people, some are professionals, some are entrepreneurs in the in the same family business and how do you harness that? Uh, and uh, uh, then the People Action Network, we focus on the top five uh, uh, UN SDG goals and uh, which are dear to me. And uh, I'm actually the uh, the the uh, the. Uh, the vice chair for that network. So each of these networks, we have 5,000, 10,000 people, five to 7,000 people. And uh, uh, so that networks in YPO are, are farly less used. And I actually see great, greater value in these networks because it gives you a wider umbrella, more horizontal space to look at what others are doing in other countries and other other areas and then bring them up to get uh, to, to what you can do and what you're doing. So and, so, and then I uh, then I also like you know during COVID for example so we had great learning and 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 things like that and then uh, uh, like you know one of the things that uh, was a highlight for me during COVID for example was to spend three days uh, with one of the top trainers in the world 
uh, where YPO put together and then uh, brought in a few leaders of YPO. And then they, uh, that's exactly where I met you, Stephen. So like, you know, uh, at, at that event. So we had these huddles and stuff like that. Otherwise wouldn't have given a, t a chance for me to get to know you. So, for, for that, so. I mean, it's amazing entrepreneurial uh, sort of journey. And, uh, you know, you're very active in YPO, the Young President's Organization. A little, a little bit of context. It's it's about 34,000, 35,000 CEO leaders, uh, purposeful leaders. It's uh, across uh, 150 countries. There's about 500 or, yeah, 500 chapters, I guess. And um, uh, holding lots of events, uh, employing about 22 million and about nine trillion in annual re revenue if you were to sort of combine all the capabilities within uh, within the YPO. And these are sort of public figures that you'll see here and there uh, as people post about it uh, within the organization. Um, you also are a member of these uh, industry organizations. So, you know, uh, why do you serve uh, with these industry organizations? And then I have one last question and that is recommendations to the audience. So first of all, you're you're part of these like CII and NASCOM. I mean, um... yeah. So yeah, so the industry bodies, like you know, especially like in uh, in the different countries, have different nuances. So like you know, CII uh, represents what the issues the industry has to the government. So that uh, uh, so it's very different uh, from one person trying to face the problem. Whereas if you go in as a as a body, then you have a voice, and, and it's a bigger voice, and then. Uh, so that way, uh, our voices are heard better, and so we can come up with a common, uh, uh, like you know, uh, set of goals that we need to achieve, so that the government uh, also is able to see what the industry wants from that perspective, and then also uh, looking at others, uh, because when you when you're working with the industry body, you see if you have a problem, then the 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 the, the, the fellow members are also having the same problem, and then it's very diff uh, it's it's. Uh, it's a dialogue that you have in like, you know, over dinners or something like that. And that can spark off conversations. So like uh, this funny story of a guy pouring coffee over me, uh, uh, over my shoes uh, a guy, uh, by the name Tony. And then uh, uh, a, a week later, that's how I got into the architecture, engineering and construction yeah. business. So uh, yeah. like, you know, so you never know how, how these things can spark off. So yeah. Yeah. Serendipity, right? <laughs> yeah. So uh, Chaco, this is the last question. And, and the question is, what kind of recommendations do you want to give to the audience? And it could be uh, several recommendations. So it could be one sort of holistic um, recommendation, however you want to shape it. Yeah. So yeah, uh, I mean, there's a bunch of stuff like, you know, so uh, there are, uh, my, my ethos has been the last uh, seven, eight years. And that's why, like, you know, you mentioned the the Social Entrepreneurship Award, uh, uh, the Social Impact Award that I got from YPO, uh, uh, is uh, there are many ways to make a million dollars. Uh, one is by, uh, like, you know, investing in the share market or whatever. And then the other is to take maybe a thousand people along the journey and help them or something like that. So uh, if you can do that, I think the world needs that right now. So. Uh, especially in the uh, in the AI or the post GDP world, uh, where a lot of automation can happen. So, how do you embrace more people and take them along in your journey? I think that is critical. And another thing is that, like you know, so I'm I recently moved to uh, to to Dubai and uh, uh, establishing myself here. Uh, uh, in in a way, it gives you a fresher perspective if you were to move outside and then and create yourself. So try to do something different so it gives you a fresh line of thinking. And then uh, right in Dubai, I was I was fortunate to be at COP28 and uh, where uh, the world is looking at more sustainable stuff and like you know how can we uh, how can we live with the world in a more harmonious way. So. Uh, and I think that's something that uh, the world needs to look at, like, you know, how can we reduce our, uh, our ecological footprint? Like, you know, uh, how can we do use the latest and the greatest of technology in terms of saving the world? Because I think the world is at the brink. And uh, and we've been uh, fortunate in COP28 to actually have some good, great conversations on how to cool the world and, uh, like, you know, using innovative stuff and then try to take waste from wealth and, because there are a lot of ways to uh, to actually do some of this stuff right now. Uh, exciting times, especially uh, the convergence of where technology 
uh, is uh, converging along with the uh, with the AI world and uh, and uh, so with the computing power and stuff like that, Stephen, right down your alley. So uh, I, I think the, it's exciting times. But how do we converge all of that for the better? So and uh, and you're doing it. You're living it uh, for the AI for good, uh, Stephen. So from that angle, so I think that's that's what I would uh, summarize. So. Well, uh, uh, just amazing uh, sort of uh, recommendations, very uh, insightful, and of course, uh, packed with so much wisdom. Um, you know, thank you, Chaka, for coming in and sharing so many different aspects of what you do with our audience, all all inspirational, uh, all are catalysts for making the world better, and, you know, for the benefit of all, the benefit of humanity, the benefit of Earth ecosystems, the, benef uh, the benefit of your regions, if your country and the world in so many different ways. So thank you and sharing so much today. Sure. Thank you, Stephen. Just trying to do our two cents. So uh, <laughs> thank you for having us and then uh, uh, look forward to seeing you soon. So uh, thanks, everyone. Thank you. Yeah. Well, your two cents is like <laughs> the two cents, but thank you so much. Okay. Sure. Bye. Sure. Thank you, Stephen. Good day. Thank you for listening to the brand called You Videocast and Podcast platform that brings you knowledge, experience and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Just search for the brand called you.